is like a sweet, sweet honey on my lips, like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy. Morning. Good morning. Uh, whether you are worshiping online today or here in person, thank you for choosing to worship at New Promise Lutheran Church. Uh, if you are here in person and this is your first or second time visiting New Promise, I invite you to take the yellow guest card in your chair pocket and fill that out. And if you take that to the welcome window after service, there's a gift in exchange for that card. Again, thank you for coming. Uh, we have our new flower charts up for the new year, and so I invite you to take notice of that. Those fill up fairly quickly, so if there's an anniversary date or a, a date you want to commemorate with flowers, please stop by there and, and uh, claim that date. Uh, the youth are doing a table talk event tomorrow. This is their regular um, uh, event they do throughout the month, and so they're doing food and pizza, and the topic will be uh, repeat living as a minority in a majority culture. Um, not sure what that means. Hopefully youth know what that means. I don't speak that language anymore. Uh, if you are going to come to that, please text Pastor Jill. And then uh, lastly, our annual meeting here for New Promise is going to happen on January 30th. It will follow the second service. And um, if you would like to offer a motion under new business for that meeting, that needs to be in, submitted in advance by January 16th. Remember also that following the annual meeting, there is a special congregational meeting where the congregation will be voting on the council's motion to call uh, Katie Langston as a pastor here at New Promise. Um, please note that both of those will be accessible on Zoom. So you can come in person, you can also participate in that meeting on Zoom. We will send out the Zoom code for that in advance of that meeting. Those are it for our announcements. I invite the congregation to stand as you face the baptismal font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Please take a moment to think about those things for which you need forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we had expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left done, undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We will read responsively from Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as a king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The voice of the Lord is upon the water. The reading is from Acts chapter 8. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. The gospel is from Luke chapter 3. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove and a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o 
Well, in the Bible, each of the Gospels treats the baptism of Jesus slightly differently. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all have accounts of the baptism, but highlight different things about the event. John doesn't actually have a full account at all. He just refers to John the Baptist's role as bearing witness to Jesus. And still, the three that do have full accounts, though they be different, have one thing in common. They all mention the voice from heaven, which makes me think that that must have been a pretty significant part of the event. I mean, honestly, hearing any voice come from the sky, I would think would be monumental in anyone's life. But here at the baptism of Jesus, each writer intentionally mentioned it. And so therefore, I think it seems to hold particular significance. Significant in that it was the moment where people basically passed from John the Baptist to Jesus. They'd been following John, wondering if he was the Messiah, when at the water, it became crystal clear who their attention should be on. Significant in that it was God who did that revealing of truth, revealing who Jesus was and his identity as the Son of God. This moment at the Jordan also revealed the character of God the character of one who freely gives of himself, of forgiveness, of love, grace, and life everlasting. John the Baptist was chosen, chosen not to be the Messiah, but to prepare the way for the Messiah to tell others and to bring them to baptism in Christ. And the people who came to the waters may have come because of John's words, but it was God who intended those words to be heard. And it was God who said of Jesus, this is my beloved. So let there be no mistake. Jesus is God's chosen his beloved, his own, the word made flesh. As his beloved, Christ's name was written on God's heart, written there for the sake of the world and written from love. As I pictured that in my mind, weirdly, I pictured also the story of Toy Story 1. The lead character, the cowboy doll, Woody, walks around with the name of Andy on the sole of his shoe, indicating his belovedness as Andy's. If that image doesn't do for you, maybe you'd prefer the image of Mom, writing your name on your shirt tag, or your coat, or even your underwear. You might not call your underwear beloved, but you can't deny that it was yours. So now, picture Jesus written there on God's soul, his heart undeniably his. In baptism, God calls us beloved as well. Our names are written on the heart of God, and hopefully his is written on ours. In the waters of baptism, by word and the Holy Spirit, 
we receive a new identity as child of God. But that identity, our chosenness, doesn't mean superiority over others. It's given because God loves us and invites us to live that identity, to give ourselves away as Jesus did. Our names are written not for hate, but for love, for justice, not for violence. And this is important, lest we fall into believing that the meaning of being chosen gives us excuse or permission to alienate or classify others not worthy of the title or assume privileges that are not rightly ours to have. Rather, it is gift, gift from a loving father to his children. And being beloved is identity freely given. It's who we are as children of God, beloved. And growing up, our girls would often hear Joe or me say to them as they exited the car on the way to school, remember who and whose you are. They probably got sick of hearing it from us. But we said it because it was a remembrance of their baptism, of their name written on God's heart. In the waters of baptism, God calls you by name. And in those waters, Along with the word of God, you receive an inheritance of eternal life that comes with living life, loving God. And it comes with the forgiveness of your sin. Now, the event of your baptism may not have been as spectacular as having the heavens open, but... It's gift, gift to treasure nonetheless. You are a beloved child of God. There's no doubt in my mind that the words, you are my beloved, real, reveal the most intimate truths about all human beings and are words that every human being desires to hear spoken to them. The knowledge that there is someone somewhere who has chosen love is reassuring. That voice calling us as God's own does speak. And when we listen to that voice, believing and following it with our whole heart, we begin to see its power and how it takes hold and transforms our lives. So that instead of wondering if anyone cares about us, we rest securely in the love of God. Instead of dreaming of our lives as something different than they are, we remember that we are God's chosen, a royal priesthood. Instead of wondering if we matter to God, we find the assurance of God's unconditional guarantee of life forever in his grasp. Never to be separated from him in life or in debt. When we truly believe that we are beloved, our wonderings about God when, life's get, when life gets difficult are put out by the light of the world who takes the burdens for us. Instead of feeling insecure on being able to rely on God, we're given the confidence in his ability to handle our needs. He wouldn't call us beloved if we didn't matter. 
if we didn't matter to him or to this world. Beloved. From the one whose voice is over the waters, calling his son beloved. This voice, powerful enough to shake the wilderness and yet gentle enough to calm the sea, comes to you, reassuring in both tenor and tone his love for you. So take pause and listen. You are my beloved. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By the Holy Spirit, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service, that all people know they are precious in God's light. God of grace. You reveal your love and power through water and the spirit. Guard rivers and seas and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all and protect the land from drought and flood. God of grace. Establish among the nations the blessings of peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates who risk reputation or retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. God of grace. 
You protect us through fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness and despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. Comfort all who are in need. We also pray for those listed in Promising News who have asked for prayer. Prayers from the congregation are now invited, either aloud or from your hearts. God of grace, we are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice-seeking. God of grace. Lord, we ask that your provision, protection, and power rest upon all those who serve or have served in our military and as our first responders. Please place a hedge of protection around our men and women and let your angels stand guard over them. Bless them and their families for their sacrifices and service. God of grace. You created each of your saints for your glory. We give thanks for those you have called by name into your internal embrace. Comfort us in grief and release us from our fear. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in our promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share the peace of the Lord. I invite you to rise as you're able as we bring forth our gifts and offerings.
Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Led the nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right that we should give God thanks and praise. For on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, and gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gathered congregation, you may please be seated. Those worshiping at home, I invite you at this time to take up your bread. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. Take and eat. And take up your cup. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. Take and drink. The table is ready. All may come.
invite you to rise as you are able. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, Bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen.